Crocodilians. They're charismatic, a ton of research has been dedicated to them, and you feel like we should know everything about their bones, their traits, and what makes them tick. Kind of like the crocodile in Peter Pan. But no, we don't. In fact, my friend Will Hart, a fellow diabetic in paleontology, has published something new on crocodilian morphology. This has been done using fossil specimens of Thika champsa and the more famous Dinosuchus, something another one of my friends, Ben Moeller, has published on, but that was more specifically on the first fossils of Dinosuchus from the Menifee Formation. However, this combination does make me feel entirely surrounded by crocodile people. Will, though, described a specific trait in both Thika champsa and Dinosuchus neural ridge canals, and if you're wondering what that is, it's these, these little projections in the vertebra of these animals, inside of the neural canals. Meanwhile, neural canal ridges have been found in salamanders and plesiosaurs and lungfish, among other groups, and all of these would have had relatively bendy bodies, be it for moving through the water or moving through soil in the case of Sicilians, which are really odd worm-like amphibians. And like them, crocs have a lot of flexibility in their tail because they swim using lateral undulation, meaning a side-to-side -side motion that uses the tail for propulsion. And the current thought is that these neural canal ridges stabilize and anchor the spinal cord to the walls of the neural canal, just so it doesn't bend too much. You need your spinal cord to move and be able to function without being paralyzed. It's important to have it stabilized. Crocodilians, though, typically have bilobed neural canals, at least along parts of their spine and varied by each type of crocodilian. Bilobed means that there's two portions of it. It's still all in one hole, but the ridges in this study show up only in the front portion of the tail vertebra. In particular, they don't show up in any of the vertebra with bilobed morphology. So maybe the bilobed part of some of their vertebra is helping with this. But again, right now we're only looking at two species, Thika champsa and Dinosuchus. So there's a whole lot of variation with their morphology that we don't fully understand. For example, gharials have really, really you know, reduced bilobed morphology, although it is still there, but just one of the sections is much larger than the other. Realistically, the most reasonable way to look at this and understand it better is going to be by getting a few modern crocodilian specimens, dissecting them very carefully, and then seeing how exactly these canal ridges connect to the spinal cord and to the dorsal spinous, which also runs down the back and probably functions to support locomotion on land by acting as a way for shifts in body posture to be detected. Basically, kind of like the fluid moving around in your ear when you tilt your head back and forth so that you know where your head is. Same thing, but across their entire body. And so that fluid can shift slightly in it, it knows where its body is. But at least in crocodilians, this has probably evolved many times, or it's very ancestral to the entire group. And that's because Thika champsa and Dinosuchus aren't particularly closely related. In fact, research from earlier this year suggests that Dinosuchus isn't even technically a crocodilian, but instead only a stem crocodilian, just outside of what would lead to modern crocodilians, rather than what was previously thought of it being related to alligators. I will also say there is ongoing work about neural canal morphology, so we should expect more about this to be published in the future, and hopefully we can get a better understanding of the function of these ridges, and why mammals don't have them, as opposed to just Maybe it has to do with leg and tail locomotion? We don't know yet.